What we're going to do is um, go through the Tyree Nichols uh, beating or incident. Um, we've got video. I want to warn everybody, and I'll try to remember to do this throughout. We're going to be showing not just the Nichols case, but other cases that are pretty rough going. Uh, so, if you know, people should be forewarned about that. First, we're going to see him being pulled over. We can discuss what happened there, and then we will move on to the actual uh, beating that occurred. Uh, you do anything. Hey, 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 I didn't turn your ass around. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold the ground, hold the ground. All right, all right, all right. Hey, you know, you don't do that, okay? Get on the fucking ground. Get on the ground. Okay, I'm going to beat your ass. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'm on the ground. Lay down, lay down. That's all, that's all. From the point of view of somebody who has, uh, you know, prosecuted police, but and also worked with police departments and other forms of law enforcement in order to kind of make things better, what are your first, you know, what what is going on in that scene that is most important for people to understand? I spent many years either as a police auditor or as an inspector general reviewing incidents just like this, and I would say that what you see exhibited there in the first two uh, minutes is extraordinarily stupid policing uh lack of discipline a lack of exhibiting any effort at de-escalation or what often police officers will say is taking control of the scene so what you're seeing is immediately the officers start escalating you know guns are drawn yelling contradictory commands not explaining what they're doing there you know if you see um a, a well-trained unit which is doing what they would consider a high-risk stop and let's assume for a second the officers thought for some reason this was a high risk stop, even though they claim is this for reckless driving. So I have to assume this is what they do all the time. Yeah. Their tactics are off the charts horrible. Uh, some other officers met up with him uh, as he uh, fled to a nearby neighborhood uh, that apparently um, you know, was, was near where his mother's house may have been. But um, the, the, I've spliced together two diff a few different angles here. Mm -hmm. One is from a um a, a lamp post so it's a high angle shot and then you see some of the same uh off the officer's body cams so here's the high angle shot you can see him on the ground um they're again trying to subdue him there you see an officer and th there this is after they've, they've caught up to him after he ran yes they caught yeah, up yeah. with him and the officer has a baton out and now he's beating him with the baton as so yeah. The other told yeah, go ahead, Walter. So yeah. you're seeing you've seen those baton strikes. They seem to be pretty on focused. Again, a lack of poor tactics, lack of control. So what uh, sadly Mr. Nichols ran into smack dab is compliance culture. He wasn't complying. So, you know, they take that as an affront, is from what I can say. Yeah. And they kept on upping the ante. Yeah, well, and we'll see that's that same scene there from a different angle now um, and with some sound. Shut the fuck up. Hey, give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. You might get sprayed again. Hey. Hey, Mike. Hey, bro. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. He's you're saying he's complying there. Essentially at this yeah. point, when he says all right, and his hands are going behind his back now, he, he is complying. So I think that a lot of officers 
you know, let's assume everything that has happened before with the really poor tactics and, and, and unnecessary escalation and inflammatory language that none of that has happened. And you have somebody who is ostensibly uh, has presented some resistance. He's saying all right now, and they have control of his hands. Give me a prayer. Oh, watch out. Spray your eyes again. Hey, give me your hands, bro. All right, watch out. Right. Spray. All right. Give me your hands, bro. Oh, shit. Oh shit! Give me a fucking hand! Hey, I'm gonna you! Give me a motherfucking hand! Watch out! I'm gonna put the fuck out you! Get the fuck in here! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! So, I, I think this is really important with the body worn camera footage of the show. Often you're saying, why do officers use force? And they use force because they have a reasonable belief in a threat to themselves or a threat to others, or they're trying to seek compliance. Depending on what the threat is that's presented, depends about how much force should be used. Now, this officer whose body worn camera we just showed, obviously did not think it was that urgent because he had completely stepped back to the Houdat vehicle. He was taking a break, I don't know what he was thinking. And then he decides to re-engage. Does he re-engage because there's some sort of an ongoing threat that he now has to control? Or is he re-engaging because he now he wants to go in and get some licks? So again, right. you're showing a complete breakdown uh, in what policing should be. Give it to him! Give it to him! Give it to him! Same location. Ross and Kelsey, Kelsey, Ross and Kelsey. Kelsey. What's it? Give me your fucking hand. Give me your hand. Give me your fucking hand. Give me your hand, motherfucker. To most people, including myself, that looks like a beating of a, at some point, helpless and relatively defenseless guy to the point of unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, they're, they, they keep yelling, do this with your hands. Let me see your hands. Even though they, it, it seems like they, they had him somewhat under control. These guys know that they're wearing body cameras. Why would they do this knowing that it's all on camera? I'm going to speculate here for a second. Okay. And, and, this, and the speculation is that when you have officers who in, engage in uh, excessive force and violations of the Fourth Amendment on a regular basis. They are essentially rolling the dice every single time that it is not going to go too far to get too much attention. These types of officers, except for the really dumb ones, I'm not sure which category these guys fall into, th those types of sadistic officers, they know where the boundaries are. This last clip I want to play from the incident is the aftermath. So it's when Tyree Nichols is, you know, they kind of pushed him up against the car. He's just slouching over there and they're all talking through what they think just happened or what maybe they want to say just happened. Oh, okay, right on time. So I took it to the ground. So I like, fuck my leg, bro. I know for the finish shit. Bro, my shit been hurting all day, but when I seen that boy running, bro, hey, that motherfucker yeah. ain't sorry no more, bro. Yes, bro. But, uh, no, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. 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 Yeah. Bro.
I ain't even, look, look. I just got him out the car. He's like, hey, bro, you good? Motherfucker, swung. Bow. Almost hit me. He, yeah. he reached for Martin Gunn. Yo, when he slammed to the yeah. car, he was on you know. He literally had his hand on Martin Gunn. Like, that motherfucker yeah. was on there. So we tried to, I'm talking about, he didn't come. Yes, oh. all this trip. I'm talking, so we tried to get him stopped. He didn't stop. We still, instead of trying to get him stopped, hit the siren. Stop, 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 stop. That man drove around, swerved like he was going to hit my car. So then I'm like, God damn, man, what, what are we doing? He pulled up to the red light, stop at the red light, put his turn signal on. So we jump out the car. <laughs> she went from there. I think the two clips are, are important for how they show really two different phenomena going on. Uh, the first was um, that immediate aftermath when probably the cameras should not have been on from their perspective. Uh, and you heard incredibly unprofessional language and attitudes being exhibited. You know, these guys were just in the fight. I mean, these are all big guys too, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Nichols was not a big guy. And so it just goes again to show how incompetent their tactics were, that if they actually were trying to deal with a combative person who he was not, uh, that how poor their tactics were, but everything they were talking about, you know, haymakers and this and that show this, uh, you know, just the admissions of violence. Uh, the second clip, though, is that is was for the camera, right? And you heard basically the, one officer kind of walking through the narrative where everyone else could hear it. And so my guess would be if there was a subsequent administrative interview, you would hear pretty much everyone reflecting that. Now, I've not looked at, for example, the narrative from the police report that was filed that night, but my suspicion is that if you listen to what he, you just heard that one officer explain there, you're gonna see a pretty close narrative that was written down. When people think there are these conscious efforts to collude, to make a false statement, what you just saw it seemed really benign and almost natural, where they don't even recognize that that is what they're actually doing. That's an excerpt from our Reason live stream that Zach Weismuller and I do every Thursday at 1 p.m. We were talking about Tyree Nichols and the Memphis police and what can be done to fix that with Walter Katz of Arnold Ventures. If you found that interesting, please look in the description of this video and click on the whole discussion. Thanks for watching.